So welcome back to Dr. Vipin's Biotech and Bioinformatics channel. And today we start with a new series on Python. And to ensure that you have a smooth introduction to Python, we'll not go into installation of Python. This is something that we'll do in a later lecture, maybe lecture number three or lecture number four, where I'll tell you how to use Anaconda and how to use Jupyter Lab Notebook for Python programming. For today, we'll start straight away by using what is known as Google Colab. So you can go to your browser and search for Google Colab. When you do that, it will take you to the first head. This is Welcome to Collaboratory, Collaboratory Google. So here you are. This is the home page for Google Colab. And as you can see, and uh, there are instructions on how to use Google Colab. But first thing, what is Google Colab? So Colab or Collaboratory allows you to write and execute Python in your browser with zero configuration required. So you don't have to get stuck with how to configure your Python and whether you're using a Mac OS or a Windows OS or anything. This is a direct straight uh, browser-based method of doing Python. Uh, then of course you can access the, the GPUs free of charge and this allows for easy sharing of code. So we'll see that as we go along. And as Google says, whether you are a student, a data scientist or an AI researcher, Collab can make your work easier. So you can have a look at this video and also go to introduction to Collab here. So first we need to sign in. So you can sign in through your Gmail. So once you're signed in, this is your Google Collab and it will show you a list of what you've already done and also give you a welcome to collaboratory, a slight introduction to the how to use it. Let's say I want to open a new notebook. So I can go here and go to new notebook, right? So this is going to be a new notebook for me. In a new notebook, you'll have an empty notebook here. This is the part where you can write your code. And in case you want to write a comment or a text, you can use the text box. So you can say add text box and you have a text box here. Let's say let's, in a new notebook, you'll have an empty notebook here. This is the part where you can write your code. And in case you want to write a comment or a text, you can use the text box. So you can say add text box and you have a text box here. So we print some message here. So let's say, so we are adding this message in the text box. Text box will not be a part of your actual execution of the code. So this is just to embellish your code with some instructions. Then of course, if you want to move it upwards or downwards, let's say we want to make it the main banner of the, or the first line of the program, so you can move it up. And here you are. So this is your welcome to Dr. Wippen's Biotech and Mathematics classroom. And if you click here again, you can do a bit of uh, text editing. So you could make it, uh, let's say you want to make it bigger, so you can toggle the heading and it becomes big here if you see. Then if you want to make it bold, you can just click on bold here. So it becomes bold now. Then if you want to italicize it, you can click on I and it just becomes italics, right? If you want to delete uh, an additional cell, you can do that. So you say just delete cell and here you are. Now let's say you want to add uh, a code chunk to your program. So you can click on this plus code here. And now of course, as is customary, you can write your print hello world, right? So which is a regular and a normal way of starting writing a program in any language. So let's say you say print. So print as a command whose argument is what you want to print. So print is followed by round brackets and in round brackets and double quotes, you can mention whatever you want to print. So let's say today we are W-R-I-T-I-N-G writing R F Y R first by P R O G program right so here you are and you should be able to now run this so if you see there is a play button here when you run this here this will print for you the message that you printed and you see there is a error here right so here you are and you can correct this now so you can say today and then of course you can close the previous uh, run and play this again and you print your uh, message again in the correct uh, spelling right so today we are writing our first python program right 
Now, uh, a bit about how to set up your notebook. So you could go to the settings button here. And first thing is a theme. You could select the theme that you want to. So you could go for a dark theme or a light theme. If you go for a light theme and say save, this will be all in white background now, right? And then of course, uh, we prefer a dark theme because that reflects less on my glasses. So let me just uh, come back to the dark theme here. And then you have the editor where you can again select for high dark contrast, high contrast dark, or there are other options, default dark, this will be lighter. So if you click on this and say save, this is how it is going to be, right? So this is becoming a little lighter. The contrast is gone. The background is slightly less black and more gray. So again, you can go back to settings here. And in settings, you can go back to editor. You can select your, let's say, high contrast dark. Let, let's also try this theme here. This is called Synthwave 84. So let's say what this gives us. So here we are. This is a blue background and a slightly violet background. And then you have your color coding also slightly changed. So this is not very appealing to the eye, I guess. So we'll go back to our dark and strong contrast theme. So we go back here and we go to editor again. We are into the dark theme and within the dark theme, now I'm selecting for, a, let's say default dark, right? And you say save and here you are. The background will now be absolutely black. Right, so here you are. You could also add the comment using the hash mark. So you could still say code and in code, you could add a hash, right? And let's say we are now going to use Python as a simple calculator using Python as a simple C A L C U L A T O R. This will not be executed because it is a comment and begins with a hash mark code. And let's say we do simple uh, mathematical calculations, two plus five, and you press run, and this should give you seven. So you can say two asterisk five, right? Asterisk 10, right? So let's say what this gives us. This should give us 100, right? So here you are. So here you are. You can add another code here, and we can do a bit more mathematical, mathematical questions. So let's say uh, 2 asterisk asterisk 4, right? And you play here. And this is basically 2 raised to power 4 or 2 into 2 into 2 into 2, right? Then let's say you want to calculate the modulus. So let's say you want to calculate the remainder of a certain division. So here again, you add the code. And let's say you say 6 percent 4, right? So what you're looking for is a remainder of the division between 6 by 4, right? So let's say percentage here and you should get a two value here. So this is correct again, right? And uh, then of course you could uh, do some other calculations. So you could have a more complex calculation. You could go to code again. So here you are. So this is some of the basic mathematical calculations that you can do. We have shown you how to uh, start Google Collab, how to change the settings of Google Collab. And then we've talked a bit about how to use Python as a simple calculator or to display certain messages. So for example, you've used the print command. And then of course, you've done some ethical calculations. Let's also, before closing, see one more thing, how to take an input from a user, right? So let's do that here. Uh, let me add another chunk of code. So here you are, you say, so let's say you're asking for the user to give his name. So I'll say name is equal to I-N-P-U-T. And then the message that I want to print on the terminal so that I get a name in return. So I-N-P-U-T input your F-I-R-S-T first name. And uh, let's play this out. So you now click on the play button. And here is where you can have your first name. So let's uh, 
V I P I N, right? And again, I've discovered a spelling mistake. So we'll correct that again. So here you are, you can correct that. You say name, and that is corrected now. And then, of course, you want to correct this also. So you can close this and rerun and now give the name correctly. So let's say V I P I N. Right? And you press enter. So here you are. You have taken input from the user and printed it on the terminal. So if you see, there is no space between name and weapon. So if you want to do that, you can again give a space before you close it under commas. And then, of course, you want to play this again. So here you are. And now you say V I P I N and you press enter. And now you say print. Again, round brackets and in round brackets in quotes. And then, of course, you can give a comma here. And then the variable in which your name is stored. So that is N A M E, right? And you press enter here, right? Now you can run this part of the code, and this will give you my name is Bipin, right? So this is where we are today. And we can give a title to this. F-I-R-S-T first, it's called P-Y-T-H-O-N, right? And that becomes the name now. And you could make it your favorite by clicking on this. So in today's lecture, we've talked about Google Collab and how to take an input from the user, how to display the value input onto the terminal. And then also we've done a bit of basic mathematical calculations using Python. So we stop here. And of course, uh, as we move along, we'll talk in the next lecture about data types in Python, and then in the next lecture about data structures in Python, right? And once again, I request you to keep sharing the videos onto your WhatsApp groups and onto your friends so that we grow together, right? Thank you very much.